5 discusses partial fraction decomposition. And this really isn't an integral integration technique per se. It's just a way to uh, deconstruct a rational function into several smaller uh, fractions. So, it, you know, you can do that without actually having to integrate, but it's very useful when we're integrating because these um, larger polynomials within rational functions um, tend to be hard to integrate. So let's talk about how can we break a, a fraction into smaller fractions. <clears throat> so first, if you have your numerator over denominator, n of x over d of x, and it's an improper fraction, then just do long division to separate the quotient from the remainder, okay? And then uh, you can look at your remainder and see if that needs to be broken up any further. All right, as far as... Um, Anything that cannot be used long, long division on, we need to completely factor the denominator. All right, and any repeated factors must be written using an exponent. Um, and then keep in mind that you will have some that have quadratic factors. Okay, um, if each linear factor is going to have a constant, um, and we're going to use uh, different variables to represent those constants in the numerator. And then each quadratic factor is going to have a linear numerator. Okay, so you'll see when we get to those examples. So let's just get right into some examples. So in this example one, <clears throat> here's where we do have an improper fraction. Notice that the degree of the numerator is larger than the degree of the denominator. So we're going to do long division. So let's get started. 2x cubed plus x squared minus 7x plus 7 divided by x squared plus x minus 2. Okay, so for this first one, we're going to be multiplying by a 2x. So that'll give me 2x cubed plus 2x squared minus 4x. Make sure you're subtracting this. Be careful here. So we're going to get negative x squared minus 3x plus 7. All right, and then we'll repeat the process. So this will just be a minus 1. So then we'll have negative x squared minus x plus 2. Make sure you're subtracting. And then we're going to get negative 2x plus 5. So we're going to have this plus negative 2x plus 5 over x squared plus x minus 2. Okay, so <clears throat> all we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this integral. And instead of it looking like this, we're going to write it like this. 2x minus 1. Let's go ahead and separate these. I'll, I'll keep that as its own integral. And then I'll have another integral that has negative 2x plus 5 over the original denominator. Okay, so obviously this first one is just a simple polynomial. We can do the antiderivative there very easily. Um, the next one we need to figure out is is um, do I need to do the partial fraction decomposition or do I have enough? So if the denominator was my u, what would be my du? Well, it would be 2x plus 1. And I can't really factor that out or do anything with that really. So we are going to do the partial fraction decomposition on the second integral. So let's block this off here. So I know that went with our long division. I'm going to do the partial fraction decomposition uh, in green. So we first need to factor this. This is going to be x plus 2, x minus 1. Okay, so I know that when I break this down, negative 2x plus 5 over my factored denominator, that this is going to be equal to something over, and I'm going to use a for that, something over x plus 2 plus something, some constant, over x minus 1. 
Okay, so we're breaking it apart. So doing what, what it did look like before we got common denominators. So here's all we do. We're going to multiply um, everything by that common denominator. So, <clears throat> so if I multiply everything by x plus 2, x minus 1, on the left-hand side I just get negative 2x plus 5. If I multiply it by this first fraction, then the x plus 2s are going to cancel, and I will just have a times x minus 1. And then if I multiply this common denominator by the second fraction, then x minus 1s will cancel, and I will have b times x plus 2. Alrighty. So, all we're going to do is uh, pick values of x. Um, we're going to plug them in, and that's going to help us get values for a and b. Now, the way we pick them is we're going to pick them wisely and, and get things that equal 0. So, if I want to get eliminate my b, it would be nice if this value over here was 0. So, I'm going to pick x equals negative 2. So, when I let x equals negative 2, then my left-hand side is going to be, let's see, negative 2 times negative 2 would be positive 4, plus 5 is 9. And then I'm going to have a times negative 2 minus 1, that'll be negative 3. And then this will be 0, so I don't need to write the b part. So this allows me to solve for a, and so a is equal to negative 3. All right, then I'm going to pick another value of x. This time I'm going to get rid of my a, and... So I'm going to pick x equals 1. That'll make 0 right here. So if x equals 1, this is going to be positive 3. And then a part goes away. That'll be 0. And then I'm going to have b times 1 plus 2 is 3. All right, so b is going to be equal to 1. So I know that this fraction is going to be equal to my a was negative 3 over x plus 2, and then my b was 1 over x minus 1. All right, so um, I'm going to go back. Yeah. I'm sorry, my cursor was not cooperating. I'm going to go back and replace this, uh, this integral we still have this guy, but now I'm going to have a separate integral for the a1, so that was the 3 over, or negative 3 rather, over x plus 2 dx, and then I'm also going to have the b1, so that's going to be another integral that was 1 over x minus 1. Okay, so now we're ready to do some integration. So let's use uh, red for integration. All right, so antiderivative of 2x, that'll be x squared, and then minus x. Here, uh, my u is x plus 2, my du is just 1, so that's just going to be uh, my constant, that negative 3 times the ln of x plus 2. And then same thing down here. Here I'm going to have my, my u is x minus 1, my du is just 1. So I have my constant, which is 1, times ln of x minus 1. And then I have my plus c. Now, again, we have multiple ln, so we'll probably simplify this a little bit. So we'll have x squared minus x. Let's combine these. Let's move this to be a power. And then... Um, and then make sure that uh, we put, combine it into one single log. So I'm going to have plus natural log of x plus 1 is in the numerator, or x, sorry, x minus 1 is in the numerator, and then x plus 2 to the third power is in the denominator, and then that's a plus c. All right, so we have integrated that, and this is our final answer. So that's an example of using long division coupled with the partial fraction decomposition. All right, let's look at this one. This one, notice I cannot use long division. So I'm going to factor my denominator. So first thing as far as factoring, I'm going to have x in common, and then I have x cubed minus x squared 
plus 4x minus 4. And, oh, that changed on me. <laughs> and so uh, we can do factor by grouping. So I'm going to have this, still this x in front. And then I'm going to have, if I group these two together, I'm going to have an x squared. And that will leave me with x minus 1. If I do these two, I'm going to have a 4 in front, and that will be an x minus 1. And then I'm going to have an x minus 1, and then an x squared plus 4. Okay, so that's as far as I can factor it. Notice here that I have two linears, and then I have a quadratic uh, f factor. So when we break this up, I'm going to have this, this fraction, this original fraction, is going to be equal to, let me show the factored version of that. So I'm going to have still an A for my first factor. I'm going to have a B for my second factor, just like we did in the first example. But on the last factor, the x squared plus 4, I'm going to have a linear term in the numerator. So linear means I have to have something times x plus maybe a constant. So just make sure you're doing that when you have a quadratic factor. So now we're going to multiply by that greatest common factor or that common denominator, rather. Um, so we would get this numerator is equal to if I multiply it times this first fraction, I'm going to have a the x part will cancel, but I'll still have the x minus 1 and the x squared plus 4. On the second fraction, I will cancel the x minus 1, but I'll still have the x and the x squared plus 4. And then for the last fraction, I'll have cx plus d still multiplied by the x and the x minus 1. Okay, so let's do some, some work here. We're going to let x equal 0. And what that'll do is eliminate anything with this x term. So it's going to get rid of the b and the cx plus d part. So I'm going to get, uh, if I plug in 0 here, I'm going to get negative 8 on the left-hand side. And then I'm going to have a times negative 1 times 4. So that'll give me a is equal to 2. All right, and then I'm going to let x equal 1. So that'll get rid of this a term and the cx plus d term. So if I plug in 1, that'll give me negative 10 on the left-hand side. And then the a won't be there. I'll have b times 1 times 1 squared plus 4, which will be 5. So that makes my b negative 2. Now for the cx plus d, notice that I can't plug in anything to get rid of that x squared plus 4 term. So we're just going to have to pick um, small numbers to plug in, and then we'll do a system of equations to solve for cx plus d. So I'm just going to pick, like, negative 1. So if I pick negative 1, my left-hand side will be negative 6. We're going to go ahead and plug in values for a and b and x. So in that first one, that'll be 2 times negative 2 times 5. My b, that'll be negative 2 See, that'll be negative 2 Sorry, I'm just making sure I did that correctly. Yeah, negative 2, okay. And then negative 2 times our x is negative 1, so negative 1, and then times 5. And then over here, 
we're going to have c times x. So that's going to be a negative c. Keep that in mind. So that's a negative c plus d times negative 1 times negative 2. Okay, so I'm going to simplify this a little bit. This is negative 6 is equal to negative 20 plus 10. So that's going to be negative 10. And then I'm going to have still that negative C plus D times a positive 2. And again, I'm just trying to get my C and D isolated. So if I add that 10 over, that'll give me 4. And then 4 divided by 2 will give me positive 2. So I'm going to have negative C plus D is equal to positive 2. All right, so we're going to use this as one of our equations for our system. And then I'm going to do another one. Let's do the, the next one in black. So we're going to let x equal, let's say, positive 2. So that'll make the left-hand side 0. That'll make this 2 times 1 times 8. And then I'm going to have a negative 4 times 8. And then I'm going to have c times x, so that'll be a 2c plus d. And then that'll be multiplied times 2 times 1. Okay, so this is going to be 0 is equal to, that'll be 16 minus 32. So that'll be a, a negative 16. And then I'm going to have a 2c plus d times 2. So if I isolate the 2c plus d, that'll, I'm going to add this 16 and divide by 2. So that'll be a positive 8. 2c plus d is equal to a positive 8. So I'm going to use those to figure out my c and my d. So yeah, when you have these quadratic uh, problems, you do have to do a little bit more algebra with them. So let's uh, combine our, our uh, equations together. So if I multiply this one by a 2, and then make that a 4, and then add my uh, two equations together, the c's will cancel. I'll get a 3d, and then this will be a 12. So d is going to be 4, and then that'll make c equal to 2. Okay, so ooh, all of that work, and now we've got all of our fractions broken up. So let's rewrite our integrals. So I'm going to have my a over x, so we said a was 2 over x dx, and then we said we're going to have our b over x minus 1, b was negative 2 over x plus, minus 1 dx, and then we have our cx plus d. So that's going to be 2x plus 4 over x squared plus 4 dx. All right, so when we go to integrate, we've got just 2 times ln of x. Over here, we're, this is again just the, the u is x minus 1, so our du is 1. So I'm going to bring out that negative 2 times ln of x minus 1. Here, what we can do is break this up even more. We could do one integral with a 2x over x squared plus 4. So that'll be nice for a u substitution. Keep in mind that this is if this is the u, my du is 2x. And then that'll leave us with a 4 over x squared plus 4 over here. Now this one, we can't use u substitution, but this is a nice arctan one. Okay, so when I do the integration here, this is just u substitution. So this will be ln of x squared plus 4. And then here, Remember, for your arctan, my u is x and my um, a is 2. So we would have the 4 in front. 
And then remember we um, always do 1 over a, so that would be 1 over 2. All right, that's just whatever's being squared. And then we have arctan of u over a, so that's x over 2 plus c. All right, so let's simplify this a little bit. I'm going to combine all my ln's together. So keep in mind that we can put coefficients as powers, and then anything with a negative will go in the denominator. So I'm going to have natural log of x squared, that's from here, times x squared plus 4. And the denominator, I'm going to have this guy, x minus 1 raised to this power 2. And then over here, I'm going to have 4 times a half, that's just 2, arctan of x over 2 plus c. So all of that work, this is a nice kind of review of all those integration techniques, all of that work gives us that final answer. Okay, so we're on our last one. I'm going to erase all this because I had to borrow some space. So... Bear with me for a minute. Okay. So, our example three, again, we cannot do long division. So, we're going to go right into factoring. So, let's factor this. We've got x times x squared plus 2x plus 1. And then if I... Factor this trinomial, that'll give me x plus 1 and x plus 1. Now, this remember we said that when we have a repeated factor, we have to write this as possible fractions. I know I'm going to have something over x. Okay, so I'll put the a there. I could have b over x plus 1, and I could have a c over x plus 1 quantity squared. So this is what most people get confused about is why do I have to put both of them? We don't know what combination of these fractions gave me this final result of x, x plus 1 squared, and then with our numerator of 5x squared plus 20x. So we're allowing for all possibilities. And if it's nothing, then our b will come out to be 0 or our c will come out to be 0. And, and we won't have to worry about it, but we have to allow for that possibility. Also, another, another place where people get confused is this is not a quadratic factor. It's a repeated factor. Okay, so we don't have to put a cx plus d here. So that's another thing we need to keep in mind. All right, so let's start the partial fraction decomposition. Let's let x equal 0. Oh, actually, let's multiply 3 by the common denominator. So I'm going to have 5x squared plus 20x plus 6 equal to a times x plus 1 quantity squared plus b times x times here, one of the x plus 1s we cancel, but we would still have an x plus 1. And then on our last one, it would just be c times x because both x plus 1s would cancel. All right, so now we're ready to let x equal 0. That'll get rid of the b and the c terms. So that'll be 6 is equal to a times 1 squared. So that means a is equal to 6. Then if I let x equal negative 1, okay, that'll get rid of my a term and my, and my b term, but it, not my c term. So here that'll be, let's see, on the left-hand side, that'll be negative 9. I won't have an a term, I won't have a b term, but I will have c times negative 1, so negative c. So my c is equal to 9. And then so I won't be able to cancel both A and C at the same time, so we can just pick a value, an easy value. Let's pick X equals 1. So that'll give me on the left-hand side 31, and I'm going to be plugging in the A value and the C values here, so I'm going to have uh, 
6 times, let's see, that'll be 2 squared, so that'll be 4. And then I don't know my b value yet, but my x value is 1, so that'll be 1 times 2. And then my c value is 9 times 1. Okay, so if we simplify this, we're going to get 31 equals, this will be 24 plus 9, so that'll be 33 plus 2b. And then subtract that, that'll be negative 2 equals 2b. So b is equal to negative 1. All right, so we have all of our pieces. So let's rewrite our integrals. So we said we would have a, which is 6, over plain old x. Then we said we would have our b, which is negative 1, over just plain old x plus 1. And then we said we would have c, which is 9, over x plus 1 squared dx. Okay, so let's see what we can do with the integration. Here, this is just a constant times the ln of x. Same thing here, I'm going to have a negative 1 times ln of x plus 1. And then on our last one, this is another u substitution. So here u would be x plus 1, and our du is simply dx. So I would just have, this is like 9 times the integral of u to the negative second. Okay, so it's not a natural log, but um, it is going to be a power rule. So if we add a power, that would be to the negative 1, and then divide by that negative 1. So I'm going to have a negative 9, and then I'm going to have my u in the denominator, and my u is x plus 1. Okay. Okay, so just combine these a little bit. So we're going to have natural log of x squared, or not x squared, x to the 6 over x plus 1 minus 9 over x plus 1. All right, so you've got examples of long division, uh, simple partial fraction decomposition, and then you've got a quadratic term and then a repeated term, which should be enough to help you do your homework.